Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 147, we'll talk about the fallacies of versioning. You can find a listing of all the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday through my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. Uh, much of the material that I do in Software Architecture Monday, especially of late, uh, does come from these two books I wrote with my friend Neil Ford, Fundamentals of Software Architecture and also Software Architecture, the Hard Parts. Of course, today we're going to talk about fallacies, and one in particular. Now, back in the mid-90s, Peter Deutsch and some other folks from Sun Microsystems coined the eight fallacies of distributed computing. and I did a lesson, as a matter of fact, it was way a long time ago, <laughs> lesson 18, <laughs> on talking about those fallacies of distributed computing. Um, all eight of those fallacies are as valid today as they were back in the mid-90s. Well, it turns out that Neil and I, Neil Ford and I, have been having some fun uh, starting to coin the next eight fallacies of distributed computing. And as a matter of fact, I wanted to offer you up fallacy number nine of distributed computing. And that fallacy is that versioning is simple. Take, for example, a basic and most basic microservices ecosystem. Just with microservices alone, we have four main artifacts at a minimum that we have to worry about versioning. We may version a particular endpoint on the API gateway. We may version a strict contract, for example, in JSON or XML schema. I may have different versions of a service that performs different activities. And also versions and multiple versions of shared libraries. Just in this picture alone, we can start to gain an appreciation for some of the complexity that exists with trying to manage different versions. For example, endpoint four talks to schemas one, two, and three. Schemas one, two, and three talk to services 12.5, 12.4, 12.3, and 12.2. And all of those use different shared library versions as well. As a matter of fact, it could use multiple shared libraries. And you can start to see, uh, it gets mind boggling to know uh, what version of different artifacts that particular endpoint actually supports. And that's where our challenge occurs. Oh, well, let me show you an example of some of the complexities and ways of dealing with some versioning at the higher level than a service. Let's say that we've got a trading application and I do a post to buy certain stock. And so my post is for the app uh, version 1.0 of that endpoint. I'm doing a trade and I'm doing a buy. Now I'd like to buy some Apple stock. Well, it turns out that Apple common stock, for example, has three different ways of representing it. I can represent it by a symbol, AAPL. I can represent it by what's called a QCIP, usually used in the United States. And for example, 0378331100 or a CDAL, which is a lot of times used in Europe, the Stock Exchange Daily Official List, which is 2046251. Well, it turns out that all three of these represent the same instrument, Apple Common Stock. Well, here's my current contract. Now, notice on my schema, this is a strict contract in JSON, I've got an account that has to be a number, a QCIP that has to be a string, shares, that have to be a number, a minimum of 100, and all three of these are required. So if I've got two consumers, and basically the first client here does a post with the accept header on JSON for account number 12345 for that QSIP, which is Apple, for 1,000, of course this passes and perfectly validates and it's fine, as does consumer two to purchase 200 shares of Apple stock. That works fine as well. But what happens if I change my contract from a QCIP to a CDAL? Now suddenly, consumer one, which uses a CDAL, works perfectly fine. But consumer two, who did not know about that change, all of a sudden breaks. Well, we can fix these kind of problems 
through versioning. It's simple. Believe me. <laughs> now, a fallacy is something that we believe to be true, but it's really not. And that's what a fallacy is. So one approach <clears throat> might be to say, well, I can version the API. So posts for app 1.0 to go to QSIPs, and I can create another endpoint for app 1.1, which uses CDAL. Uh, the problem with this approach, at least in my opinion, is I've got two different endpoints for the exact same functionality. The only difference here is actually the contract. Now, if I had different trading functionality or I'm trying something new, that might warrant a different endpoint version. But my preference is to go one step lower and actually apply versioning at the contract level through the header of the request. So, using the accept header, I can use what's called a vendor MIME type to actually specify which version of the contract I would like to pass in. Version 1 that uses a QSIP, version 2 that uses a CDAL. And now, consumer 1 still uses CDALs, so notice the vendor MIME type here is on version 2 of JSON. And that works, but consumer 2 is still using QSIPs to denote that Apple stock. And notice the version 1 right here, as opposed to version 2. And as a matter of fact, that now works. So this is actually a pretty easy solution to this problem. And that's exactly where the fallacy of versioning comes in. And let me explain. The actual service that's now reading in these contracts first has to extract what version of that contract I'm accepting. And so I can, through regular expression here, uh, fairly straightforward, nothing's easy, of course, but fairly straightforward, uh, get that version. But that's where the difficulties begin. Because now, in my service, I have to have this kind of code. If it's version 1, then use a QSIP. If it's version 2, use a CDAL. If it's version 3, use a symbol. If it's version 4. And the problem is, where do I stop? In other words, at some point, I may not be able to support a prior version just because it breaks our code. And that's where the complexities of versioning come in. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go one step further and show you another fallacy of versioning. And it's not simple. Because I'm talking about the technical aspects right here. But then there's the other softer aspects. How do I communicate a version to other teams? How do I communicate that I need to deprecate version 1 of our contract or version 1.1 of our API or version 2.3 of our service or version 5.4 of our shared library? When I make a change, that needs to all be communicated. And these type of communication strategies are very difficult, not only to create, um, but also to govern and maintain. And so we've got a lot of complexities when we start talking about, oh, just version it. And there's a lot to versioning, hence why we're calling this the ninth fallacy that versioning is easy. <laughs> All right, so fun with kind of fallacies, and this has been Lesson 147. Um, you know what I'm going to do? In Lesson 148, I think I'm going to show you fallacy number 10 of distributed computing, another fallacy that both Neil Ford and I had coined. And so stay tuned in two more Mondays for that next fallacy of distributed computing on Software Architecture Monday. Thank you so much for listening.